constipation is a common complaint among patients of all ages. It is estimated that 16 out of 100 adults will have symptoms of constipation. This is even higher in patients older than 60. Though occasional constipation is very common, some people experience chronic constipation that interferes with their daily activities. A patient with constipation may have one or more of the following symptoms. You may have fewer than three bowel movements a week. The stool you pass may be hard, dry, or lumpy. You may find it difficult or painful to pass stools. You may feel that you have not fully emptied the rectum even after going to the toilet. You may need help to empty your rectum, like using the hand to press on your abdomen or using a finger to remove stools from your rectum. The normal pattern of bowel motions are quite different between individuals. So only you will know what's normal for you. The constipation may be considered chronic or long-standing if you have had these symptoms for more than three months. If you have any of the following symptoms in addition to constipation, you should see a doctor right away. Blood in your stool or passing blood from the back passage. Pain in your abdomen. Inability to pass gas. Vomiting, fever, lower back pain or loss of weight. The causes of constipation can be divided into several groups. Blockages in the colon or the rectum. Changes in the nerves supplying the colon or the rectum. Changes in the muscles involved in elimination of stool. Conditions that affect the hormones. And certain medicine and dietary supplements. Blockages in the colon or rectum may slow or stop the stool movement. There are several reasons for this. There could be a blockage in the intestine and sometimes this may be due to a cancer. There can also be a narrowing of the colon due to non-cancerous disease. The rectum can bulge through the back ball of the vagina in females. This is known as a rectocele. Neurological problems can affect the nerves that cause contractions of the muscles in the colon and the rectum. These may include any damage to the nerves known as autonomic nerves. Diseases like multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease can also cause constipation. If there are problems with the muscles forming the flow of your pelvis, this too may cause constipation. In anismus, the muscles are unable to relax to allow for a bowel movement. These muscles may sometimes be unable to coordinate relaxation and contraction correctly. This is known as dyssynergia. Weakened pelvic muscles may also cause constipation. Age 
Any disease or condition that alters the balance of hormones may cause constipation. The common diseases that cause constipation include diabetes, an underactive thyroid gland, and an overactive parathyroid gland. Constipation is also common in pregnancy. Some medicine and dietary supplements can also cause constipation. Some of these include some pain medication, certain antispasmodics, medicine used to prevent seizures known as anti-epilepsy treatment, calcium channel blockers, iron supplements, and medicine used to treat Parkinson's disease. When the doctor examines you, he will focus on identifying the cause as well as complications of constipation. He will check if you are dehydrated. He will examine your abdomen, paying particular attention to feel for any abnormal masses and the sounds made by your bowels. He will also examine your back passage to assess for both muscles and any complications like hemorrhoids or rectal prolapse. The commonly done blood tests include tests to identify diabetes, an underactive thyroid, or an altered level of calcium. Depending on your doctor's assessment, you may need an endoscopy. This could be either a flexible sigmoidoscopy, which looks at the distal part of your colon, or a colonoscopy, which looks at the entire colon. If you would like to know more about these, I welcome you to check out the video on endoscopy. You may need a colonic transit study to see how well your stool moves through your colon. This is a set of special x-rays taken over several days. You will first swallow a capsule with some markers that can be seen on x-ray. By studying these markers, the doctors can know if your colon is working slower than normal. Depending on the suspected diagnosis, you may need some special investigations. In defecography, X-ray or MRI images are taken to see how well you can hold and release stool. Using anorectal manometry, the doctor can check how well the anal sphincter muscles work and how sensitive your rectum is. A balloon expulsion test checks if you have any problems pushing out stool. The most important thing in managing constipation is preventing it. You must include plenty of high fiber food in your diet. These include fruits, vegetables, and whole grain cereal. The average adult should get 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. You must also reduce the intake of food with low amount of fiber, like processed food. You must have a healthy intake of fluid, and this is especially important in places with warm weather like Sri Lanka. You should stay active and exercise regularly. You shouldn't delay the urge to pass stool. You should also try to establish a regular schedule for bubble movement. If you continue to be constipated, 
in spite of all the preventive methods, you will require medicine. The commonly used medicine include fiber supplements, stool softeners, osmotic agents, lubricants, and occasionally stimulants. It is important that you get medical advice when using these and don't try to self-medicate. Some patients will not improve even with these medications. They will need special treatment. These may include medicine like lupiprostone or procalopride. Some will need biofeedback therapy. This is a special form of physiotherapy to retrain your muscles. Very rarely, patients who don't improve with any of these measures will require surgery. If you have constipation, especially for a prolonged period, you may develop complications. Because of the hard stool, the skin in your anus may tear. This is known as an anal fissure. Excessive straining during bowel movement may cause swelling in the veins in and around your back passage. These are known as hemorrhoids. If the constipation continues for a long period, hardened stool may get accumulated. This is known as fecal impaction. Due to prolonged and excessive straining, the rectum may stretch and protrude from the anus. This is known as a rectal prolapse. If you would like to know more about this or have any questions, please leave a comment below. You could also comment on any topics you would like me to cover in the future. Thank you.